I got a pack of cards and they're all different, my friends. Let's keep this quick, so we'll only use about half the deck. Let's use about, I don't know, 20 odd cards or so here. 20 cards. Uh, Chris, my friend here, let's do this. 20 cards approximately. Name a number between 1 and 20, doesn't matter. Uh, 9. 9, okay. Well, I want you to take the cards in your own hands and deal down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Just like that. There you go, my brother. Now remember, you could have named any number between 1 and 20. Okay, thank you, man. I'm going to isolate that card. Totally free choice. Narrowed it down to one and only one card. I'm going to lift it up. I'm not going to look at it. I'm going to show it to the camera. Okay? Going to be as fair as I can. Now look. Along with the deck of cards, my two hands, I've also got here somewhere in my pocket. Where is it? Oh, here it is down here. I got a, uh, a sugar packet. Now watch. If I take the sugar packet, just rub it on the top and give a shake. Something crazy happens. Look. inside the sugar packet. Only one card, clearly inside, not an illusion, okay? And at this point, if I even wanted to, they can go through the pack and look, and whatever card they randomly chose is gone. They can examine the cards. And then the really frightening, scary 3D miracle ending here. Open it up, and it is, of course, the selected card. You ever wonder why so many of the classic, legendary, most famous tricks of magic are so simple? They can be described in just a few words. You got sawing a lady in half, uh, making a rabbit appear, turning a weasel inside out. All this standard stuff, right? Now, it's simple, simple, simple appeal to the imaginations of other people. In the same way, this trick, if you only had to do one card trick for someone, consider this one. It's so straightforward. Let's jump in with the prep, the handling. This is what you need. You're going to need two queen of diamonds. In this case, a duplicate. One of them I've already got folded neatly into quarters, okay? Then I grab a sugar packet. And, you know, you could use a safety pin. You could use a nail file, a little nail. But what you have to do, even the tip of a pair of scissors, is you have to slit open one side, not cut right through, but just sort of dig in there into the packet part. Neatly tear it open, remove all the sugar, and then clean up this edge because you're going to need it cleaned up to be able to slip this sucker neatly inside, just like that, okay? Just like that. This is in my right pants pocket, okay? And the rest is just wonderful presentation, straight up stuff, okay? I'm going to force the top card of the deck, in this case, the Queen of Diamonds. And the way I'm going to do it is I say, rather than giving them a choice of 1 to 52, I'll say, look, I'm going to grab about, I don't know, maybe say 20 cards off the top. So I've got about 20 cards here, approximately, with the queen on top. They don't know it's there. And I say, look, let's try something here. Name a number between 1 and 20. And I'm going to use this very old and very convincing countdown force. Let's say they say 8. So I quickly go, okay, so what I want you to do is take the cards and deal down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then I scoop all the cards up off the table that I've dealt and drop them back on top and hand it to them. What that does, it reverses the positions of the first eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that it will force the queen. Now this is very cool. Let me leave the cards set up, face up for a second. Let's say they say five. And remember, it wouldn't be face up. I'd say, okay, I want you to take the cards and deal down. One, two, three, four, five. Here, you go ahead, you do it. And I hand it to them. And again, when they deal down, they'll go one, two, three, four, automatically the force card is always in the position you want. It's an amazing force. Then they'll take a little peek at it, okay, like that. You gather up the cards like this, like that. So the selection is still on top. Now if you want, you can use a false cut. And this is a false cut I've been using for a long time. Very old. It's not original with me. It's old as the hills. And all I'm doing there to give a, the impression of cutting the pack is I grab the bottom packet of the cards, the bottom packet, grab them from the behind, come around, drop them, and then turn this 180 like that. It's a large action, covers as small as the idea. Boom and boom, just keeps flowing. Now I say I've got something in my pocket I think you're gonna find pretty interesting, and I put both hands in my pockets, and as I do, I'm gonna thumb off. Both hands go into my pockets for a second. The jeans are a bit snug, folks. I thumb off here, come out, and then I come out with this. The idea is that I wasn't sure which pocket they were in. Now if you're using a jacket, it'll take you a second. So I got rid of the queen. Now. Have someone put their hands on top of the deck, whatever you want. They can cover it, whatever. Wave this around. Say the magic phrase, Hello, let me be my color. I have a hope. Hobo. Just like that. Now, you don't want to flash this, so you want to come up. And I notice I'm covering, just in case the pattern, the card pattern comes through, I'm covering most of it. Then I come up and I tear. And what's cool about this is you destroy the evidence now. You can hand this to somebody. 
They can reach inside. They can remove the card. They can go through the card. They won't find the card here. Of course, when they open this up, this is the kind of trick. This is the kind of trick that truly, if you're worried about making people spit up blood or vital organs, do not show them this one. To win free Magic DVDs and gimmicks, subscribe to the channel today.